morning and welcome to my channel. Uh, so today I want to talk about my fitness journey. So discussing how I was as a really young child through teenage years and to here I am now. Um, and I think for people who don't know me personally, they probably don't like appreciate that maybe I wasn't always like super into fitness and exercise. My life was so, so different. But yeah, I think this is a really good time for me to make this video because this is the first time in a very, very long time that I've been comfortable in my own skin. Um, you know, it, it does sometimes make me feel uncomfortable to look back on photos of myself because although I know I'm not that person anymore, you know, it's always me sad to see that version of myself and it's not just about how I looked but it was how I felt. Like, I know that I was very, very insecure and wasn't happy and so I know I'm not that person anymore but, you know, obviously it still is a little uncomfortable. I think it's really important for me to show that, you know, this is my journey and so anybody can do this. So I'm going to try and keep this video to a normal length. I don't want it to be like an hour long extravaganza. So I started ballet dancing when I was about two years old. I did it up until I was 16-ish. Um, I did it a lot. Uh, the most intense times me and my sister were doing it about five, six times a week. Um, you know, so that was obviously like, that was my one part of my life that kept me active and it probably kept all my horrible eating habits at bay. Um, I was never like lean as a kid I always was a little bit as parents say like you know well built or big boned you know it, it wasn't I wasn't big but I was never slender and skinny um but yeah I quit ballet dancing when I was 16 for a variety of reasons but yeah once I kind of stopped doing ballet I just did nothing especially when I went to college I think that was a bad time for me I really wasn't happy at all there was a lot of things going on in my personal life that were affecting me and so I found myself just laying around doing nothing and eating a lot but yeah, I'll talk about this in a different video but I was binge eating a lot and by binge eating I don't mean oh just eating more than you should or like binge eating is something entirely different it's not even like enjoyable um, but yeah I was just essentially eating my feelings during college, I did start to pile on the weight. So yeah, so the summer before I turned 18, uh, I lost a load of weight. Bear in mind, I still was doing no exercise. This wasn't because I started actually getting fitter. I was just restricting calories a ridiculous amount. I think I was at this point doing like 1200 calories, which is horrendous. But yeah, that was how I lost a load of weight. I was just like weighing my cereal, uh, anything, you know. And I was really happy because, you know, I was at a happy weight. I think I got to about like 10 stone and I was like, yeah, this is great. But I still wasn't doing any exercise. Yeah, I felt happier in my skin, but then university happened. <laughs> and it wasn't because I was joining in on university life. I just had just lost all control of my eating. I was living on a solid diet of cheesy chips, Snickers and black coffee. That was like most days when I was at university. So that was quite bad. So yeah, so I, I went to do a study abroad in Japan in my second year of university. And just before I left, that was a big wake up call for me. I'd always been like a big 10, small 12. Um, but before I left, I went to go buy some jeans and I had to buy them in a size 14. Um, and I think when you have your home clothes, you know, obviously they stretch, the material stretches out as you wear them. But for a brand new pair, I had to buy it at 14. And I mean, a 14 isn't like massive, but to me, that was a big deal because, you know, I, I knew what my size normally was. So it, you know, showed me that, yeah, I had gained weight. So while I was away, um, I did actually go to the gym at the university, but again, I mean, I'm not really sure what I was doing was all that worthwhile, but you know, I was trying, I was trying to do something. Yeah, so in my third year of university, uh, when I got back from Japan, I started playing rugby. Uh, and I think rugby had such a good impact on my life, socially, mentally, everything. Um, but although I was, you know, training a couple of times a week, playing games, I still wasn't making all this drastic impact on my body because I was still eating terribly and around like September, October 2015, like I really slimmed down and I was actually really happy with my body. Like I was, I don't know, I'd clearly just got a handle on my diet, I guess, a little bit more. Um, and I think also portion control sometimes can make such a big difference. It's not that I suddenly learned to eat vegetables or really healthy foods. I think I just was learning to eat less. But then in November 2015, uh, that was when I injured my knee in rugby and I was in a leg brace for about a month and I was bed bound. So obviously I gained a load of weight again. But yeah, it was really affecting me emotionally. And I think it's really important to realize that if you wanna you know, change your diet, get healthier, fitter, it's pretty much a mental game more than it is anything else. I think it's addressing why you overeat, why you don't feel happy that makes you then 
make progress because if you don't know why you're doing it then you can't heal yourself. So I've gone over like my history and what I was like as a child and a teenager and I think yeah as you can see it was very up and down. I gained weight, I lost weight but nothing was ever sustainable and nothing was ever truly healthy. I think I just would feel unhappy about myself and so I'd just restrict my calories to just desperately try and lose weight. Nothing was ever about eating more vegetables or being healthier. It was just about trying to not feel rubbish about myself. Yeah, so the big turning point for me was uh, when I went vegetarian. And I'm not saying that you need to go veggie or vegan to be healthy. I do understand that people are perfectly healthy without that lifestyle. However, for me, it made me engage in my food and what I was putting in my body. I went vegetarian because it was a fad diet to me and I'm being brutally honest that's true I'd tried other diets but I just tried vegetarian to see how it would work um but yeah so the first thing I did because I didn't have a clue what to do was I bought a cookbook so I bought um, this deliciously Ella book um absolute lifesaver I loved it so much and I think it was it was a nice little journey for me I enjoyed like flicking through the pages looking at the recipe and thinking oh you know I could do that um I started posting stuff on Instagram um and yeah it was nice but yeah, so within a couple of months, I went vegan more for ethical reasons. But either way, I was still enjoying cooking, learning. And yeah, so in that respect, because I was seeing progress because of my diet choices, I then actually started exercising more. So this is obviously where it's more about the fitness stuff. It's very difficult for me to separate food and fitness because it all happened at the same time. So although I want this to be like a fitness video, the food still plays a big part and I think you have to recognise that if you want to start getting fitter you're going to have to fuel your body right, they don't, they're don't. they not separate but anyway, I digress. Yeah like I said I'd, um, I joined gyms before but I didn't really know what I was doing, I kind of saw exercise as a chore more than anything else so I tried doing research online seeing what looked good and I came across Cassie Ho's blog Alati's YouTube channel. I kind of, I really liked it, it kind of spoke to me I think because a lot of her stuff is to do with like flexibility and she likes to talk about all oh, getting dancers legs and I think there was a part of me in my head that was like oh well I'm reasonably still quite flexible because of my dance history and so you know maybe I'd actually be quite good at this and it seems like something that I would enjoy so I just got myself a yoga mat and I would do it in my bedroom and I mean I was in a tiny flat like my bedroom was small. I still managed it, you know, a lot of the stuff is static, a lot of it you can just do it while standing on a mat. And I was just picking random stuff off her YouTube channel, giving it a go. I felt like an idiot because I was rubbish. <laughs> I was so out of shape, but you know, I just persevered. But yeah, and for a long time, I just worked out at home and that was what I did. I, I can't say that at this point it was completely consistent. Um, people were complimenting me and saying I was looking good, but that was a lot to do with my diet, I will admit that. My exercise, I was enjoying it and I was learning, but I wasn't still fully committed, if that makes sense. But yeah, so I think it's important at this point to just, yeah, just point out that you don't need a gym membership to get fit, you can do it at home. And I think it made me feel better because I didn't have to stand there in front of loads of people and feel really like insecure about myself and worry about people looking at me, if I look stupid, if I can do something. But yeah, so this was all summer 2016, so I was a lot leaner, I was looking good, um, and I did actually join up to a gym, but I still was kind of doing my hip stuff, I wasn't doing weights or anything, I was just doing, you know, burpees, press-ups, squats, whatever, um, but then come winter time, the floodgates opened, I think because it, it was just because it was winter, you know, it bad weather, everyone's a bit more lethargic. But I kind of was always coming up with excuses as to why I wasn't gonna to go to the gym. I was tired, um, I'd feel grumpy. But yeah, so I stopped really going all that much. I was eating a lot more. So I, although I was still vegan and I was still cooking a lot, I was eating ridiculous quantities. I was overeating massively. Um, and I didn't really notice the weight gain initially. I think it was just a slow trickle. And it wasn't until probably, I don't know, March, April time, 2017, that I started to go, oh, you gained quite a bit of weight. <laughs> and so uh, that again kind of kicks out me and I was like, you know, what have you done? You, you made so much progress. Why have you ruined it? Well, not ruined it, but you know what I mean? Like I'd gone to all this effort to, you know, make myself healthier and I'd kind of just let it go to waste. Um, but yeah, so last summer 
I really went to town. I was eating really clean. I was exercising loads. I think I was like doing about five, six days a week of HIIT. Um, and I really, I really grew to love it. You know, there were still some things that I was terrible at, but you know, as time goes on, you get better. And I think that's why it's good to have a plan and stick at it because I think when you do it week one and you suck, and then you do the same routine in four weeks time, and suddenly you're like, oh, actually I'm doing, far more reps than I was last time or I'm not as out of breath and and it's those small victories that make you realize that actually you know this is all worthwhile but I think yeah even a year on I think I've, I've had a journey in my exercise routine and what I do and how I'm trying to shape my body last summer all I wanted to do was hit that was it but yeah I was doing well but like I said I, I still wasn't particularly happy I was still trying to cut calories and lose weight and I was still in this mentality of just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and I don't know I think it's quite sad sometimes to think back because I was just obsessed with being little and now I realize like how dumb is that what why do I want to be this tiny little waif but I think I, I started to realize yeah probably October November time I was like do you know what Charlie like you've got no bum you've got you're just flat as a pancake <laughs> but yeah and I think it's hard because I know my body type and I think when you look at people online you can compare yourself to them and think oh god why don't I look like them and as much as people might look at me and think oh yeah like she looks really fit and healthy like I still have very real insecurities um I don't have a waist my the, the difference between my waist and my hips inch wise is very little I I don't have curve so you know you look at girls on instagram and there's loads of girls who've got these tiny waists and these big wide hips and they just look so gorgeous and curvy and i'm just straight up and down and there's not a lot i can do about that i you know that's just my body type but the one thing i can do is i can gain muscle mass and i and if i can grow my you know my glutes my quads and also grow like my shoulder muscles i can give the illusion of you know a curve so but yeah, I, I started to realise that maybe I had different goals. Maybe I didn't want to just be small. And that, that was it. So I started, um, I joined a gym actually in Southampton when I was living at my mum's house. And I started lifting weights and I was looking at programmes online. And yeah, it's been a slow journey. Uh, I, I played around with a few different things. I started off doing more like powerlifting style where it's um, l lower reps and higher weight. Um, but personally, I wasn't really getting on with it very well. I was finding myself getting intimidated by the amount of weight I was trying to pick up. I was felt I was sacrificing form over just trying to lift as much as possible. My journey wasn't straight to, yeah, I'm just going to do weightlifting and I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, I still had to figure out a fair amount of things. But yeah, but it's been a really positive experience since I've moved to Winchester again. Um, I've joined a new gym. I'm working in a really good program. I work out like four, maybe five times a week in the gym um, alongside my rugby training. So yeah, like I said, I was doing... I was trying more like powerlifting style, like lower reps, higher weights. Now I do higher reps and lower weights. So I usually aim for about 12 reps for a set. So um, it's more, I guess, more like bodybuilding style than it is uh, powerlifting. It's interesting. I weigh the same amount as I did last year, like last summer, but I'm actually like leaner and more toned and muscly. Um, I actually, I measured myself this morning because six weeks ago I did it as well and checking my measurements from six weeks ago to today, I weigh exactly the same, uh, but I've lost an inch off my waist. So, you know, I still weigh the same because I'm gaining muscle mass, which obviously weighs more than fat, but I'm actually getting, you know, leaner. And I'm still eating uh, 2,000 calories. I, I never thought I'd be able to eat this much. I think I had it in my head that, oh, to be lean and have any sign of abs, I'd just have to eat. 1200 calories for the rest of my life which is so dumb but I, I just had no idea about you know how to heal your metabolism I thought I'd just have to cut forever you know although this is a fitness video I still talk about food because it's very difficult to talk about one without the other they complement each other so well don't think that you can do one without the other but yeah I, I hope you've enjoyed this video it's been a bit of a random journey through my life seeing me from a chubby teenager to now but yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more from me. Uh, I'm not sure whether these talky videos are good or whether I should do more like vlogs, like day in the life. I'm still just having a play around. I'm open to suggestions, but I thought that yeah, this would be a good time for me to share, you know, where I was 
here I am now. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking with it. I think it's probably going to be quite a long one, so I do apologise. Um, but yeah, thank you, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.